Imagine a trick where the spectator shuffles a deck of cards. They then select a totally random card which is returned and lost in the deck. And yet via a self-working mathematical miracle, every single time you will manage to find that selected card. Stay tuned for the trick, the secret, and of course the usual inspiring message, especially for the new year. Okay, let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to Coach Trick, where magic meets inspiration and success. Today, we're unraveling the secrets behind a mind-boggling self-working card trick that's perfect for a brand new year, and will leave you and your audience utterly spellbound. Picture this, a spectator selects a card from a shuffle deck and with nothing but the magic of words, the magician finds the card simply by spelling out its exact location. It's a trick that's not only mesmerizing, but also simple to perform. But the magic doesn't end there. Stick around as we explore how the art of magic isn't just about captivating card tricks, it also cultivates skills for wider success. This is a great trick to learn as we enter a new year. Let it serve as a reminder that success in the new year is attainable, often hiding in plain sight, waiting for us to take simple steps to uncover it. So here's to a year filled with unexpected victories, delightful surprises, and the magic of realizing our goals. Let's jump into the mysteries of the trick. Grab a deck and let's go. Okay, as ever, let's take a look at the effect itself. This is a really great self-working effect with a surprise and baffling ending. Now, it's not the easiest trick to demonstrate without an actual spectator, because in reality, the spectator will be making choices that you, the magician, won't know about. And that's what adds to the power and mystery of the effect. But it's such a great trick, I'm going to show you anyway. And you can start off by giving the deck a shuffle. Indeed, you can shuffle the deck as much as you like, and you can even hand the cards to the spectator and ask them to give it a shuffle also. This adds to the effect because you really do start off with a mixed up shuffled deck. Now, at this point, you're going to ask the spectator just to think of a number, any number between one and 10, in order to facilitate the selection of a totally random card. Now, they can think of any number they like. Ideally, a middle is a high number just to make things more interesting, but it really is a free choice. Now, once they've thought of their number, you're going to look away as the magician so that you can't see what's going on. And you're going to ask the spectator to take the deck of cards, and you're going to ask them to deal two piles of cards, each pile with the number of cards in corresponding to the number that they're thinking of. So let's say in this instance, they're thinking of the number eight, they're going to deal two piles of cards, each with eight cards in, just like this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the first pile and the second pile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now ask them to do that silently so that you can't see and you can't hear what's going on. All of this is mystery. At this point, you're going to ask the spectator to select either one of these two piles and to look at the bottom card in order to get their selected card. And once again, it really is a free choice. You're continuing to look away as a magician so you can't see what's going on. Let's say they select this pile here. Just ask them to look at the bottom card. In this instance, that's the king of spades. Just ask them to remember their selected card. Don't say it aloud because remember you don't want to know what it is, but just to remember their card, in this instance the king of spades, and to replace this pack on top of the original deck. Now at this point, you the magician can turn back around. Let's just recap what's happened. Remember, the spectator has thought of a totally random number. You the magician, you don't know what that number is. They've used that number to select a totally random card. You don't know what that card is, and that card is now back in the deck, and you possibly can't know the position of that card. But you're now going to try to sense that card just through sense alone. And you're going to do that like this, just by taking the cards 
and just trying to sense, just pick up some sort of vibration or something from their selected card. I'm not getting it at the moment. You're just going to keep going until, until you hopefully do sense something. I'm not getting anything at all in this instance. And that can sometimes happen, but that's fine because when that happens, there is one thing actually that we can do. We can try something else. And that's this. We can gather the cards together into one heap, like so. And actually, if we're lucky, we sometimes can get a selected card to come to the top of the heap. Let's just ask a spectator, is that their card there on top of the heap there? Obviously going to say no. And that would be, well, that would just be too easy, wouldn't it? Actually, to get that to work, to get the card to come to the top of the heap here, we need to give the card an explicit instruction. So let's just gather all the cards together and let's do that. Remember, the spectator has selected a secret number. They've used that number to select a secret card. That card is now somewhere in the deck. You don't know the number, you don't know the card, you don't know the location. But hopefully, by providing an explicit instruction to the cards now, we can get their card to come to the top of the heap. And that instruction is exactly that, top of the heap. So if we spell that out to the deck, T-O-P-O-F-T-H-E, top of the H-E-A-P, heap. For the first time, you're going to ask the spectator to reveal the identity of their randomly selected card. And cue the amazement as you reveal that is the card at the top of the heap. This is a brilliant self-working mystery. There's so much randomness. The random number, the random card, there's no way that you can know what the card is, what the number was, or where that card is in the deck. And yet, through that explicit instruction, their selected card would always come to the top of the heap. And now, stay tuned, because I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. Okay, so now to take a look at how this mystery works. As I said, this really is a self-working trick and it's really great because it just seems totally impossible with all of the random selections made along the way. One of the things that makes it so powerful is that you really do start with a shuffled deck. So just emphasize that the deck really is shuffled and you can give the deck a few shuffles and even hand that to the spectator and they can give it a shuffle themselves. And just emphasize, there's no doubt that deck truly is mixed up and shuffled. That all adds the power of the effect. Now, at this point, you're gonna ask the spectator just to think of a number between one and 10, any number that they like. It really is a free choice. And just to think of that number, but not to tell you that number. And then once they've thought of that number, you're going to turn away so you can't see what's going on. You're going to ask them to take the deck and just to deal two piles of cards, each pile with the same number of cards in, corresponding to the number they're thinking of. So let's say in this instance, they're thinking of the number six. They're going to deal two piles of six cards. Remember, you're looking away so that you can't see what's going on. And ask them to do this quietly so you can't really hear what's happening either. So they'll now deal their two piles of, in this instance, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Once they've done that, you're going to ask them to select either pile. Now, once again, this really is a free choice. They can choose any pile that they like. So let's say they choose this pile over here. Ask them to look at the bottom card, to pick up that pile and to look at the bottom card that's going to be their selected card. In this instance, the 10 of spades. Ask them not to tell you what the card is, but just to remember their card. And then to take that pile and to place it back on top of the original deck. At this point, you can turn back around as the magician. So they have now got their selected card somewhere in this deck here, and you don't know what it is, and you couldn't possibly know where it is but you're now going to try to sense that card, or that's what you're going to say anyway. But actually what you're going to do is secretly count the cards. And you want to count the cards until you get to the 11th card. 
Now to do this, you're going to make a story of trying to sense the cards and trying to detect the selected card. But in the act of doing that, you're secretly counting the cards just like this. One, two, three, maybe a bit of sensing of the cards. However you want to do it is fine. It's just all a cover story for counting the cards. So that's three cards. You're going to continue four, five, six. Remember, don't count aloud. Keep it to yourself. You don't want the spectator knowing that you're counting the cards. They just think you're trying to find their card. And keep going. Seven, eight, nine. A bit more sense in. And just keep going until you get to 11. 10, 11. Now, once you've got to the 11th card, you can say that you can't find the card. Would have a story that you like. But actually, this is just an excuse now to stop and bring the other pack over here on top of the 11 cards over here. So combine these cards like so. And the story that I give here is that there's one more thing we can do. If we can't find the card through sense, we can actually bring the cards together into one heap and try to get the selected card to come to the top of the heap. And you can show the top card here and just confirm that that isn't their card. And this, again, just gives you a bit of a story to say but that's because we haven't given the cards any instruction yet. And at this point, you want to take the cards in your hand and just place these back on top of the original deck. Now, if you've followed all of those steps, the miraculous thing is that the selected card will now be 12th from the top in this deck. Let's just check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, there we go, the 10 of spades, 12 from the top of the deck. The maths will take care of that, just follow the steps, you'll always end up in a position where their selected card is 12 from the top. And now all that's left is for the revelation. Now the reason that I use top of the heap is because that consists of 12 characters. So if I spell that instruction out, top of the heap, that would take me to the 12th card, which is their selected card. Now, actually, you can use any phrase that you like, and that's a good thing. One of the great things about this effect, you can adapt it in order to create your own ending. As long as you have a phrase or a saying that you can spell out that will take you to the 12th card, the effect will always still work. So, in this instance, I use top of the heap. T-O-P-O-F-T-H-E h e a p remember that's the 12th card so i know it's their card all that's left now is to reveal that ask them to reveal their card for the first time maybe emphasize once again that they selected a totally random number to use that to select a totally random card that went back into the deck there's no way you know the card the number or the location and yet at the top of the heap miraculously is their selected card this is a great effect. Just follow the steps and I guarantee it will always work. It's one of those mathematical miracles that just seems totally impossible with the amount of random selections involved. Of course, you can always make up your own story and make up your own ending. I use top of the heap because I think it works quite well, but experiment, find your own way to reveal that card. But the important thing is you follow those steps, it'll always be 12th from the top and that's what enables you to perform this amazing miracle. Practice it, play around with it, go out there, perform it, and above all, as ever, have fun. And there you have it, a spellbinding journey from a shuffled deck to the precise revelation of a randomly selected card. As you embark on mastering this trick, remember that in the realm of magic and in the journey of life, Simplicity can often be the key to unlocking the most extraordinary results. As we wrap up this tutorial, take a moment to reflect on the goals that you want to uncover in the new year. Just as we've navigated the cards to find success here, approach the coming year with the same clarity, focus and touch of magic. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more magical journeys ahead. Here's to a year filled with wonder, success and the magic of realising your dreams. Until next time, take care.